so for today, we're going to talk about states of matter because matter is an extremely important concept in chemistry, and really that's what chemistry is all about. And so I'm hoping that somewhere back in your past, you've learned what matter is. If you don't remember, matter is anything that has mass and volume. And so the mass of matter comes from the particles. And the volume is just the space that it takes up. And so we also can talk about matter in, in different forms. And I know that you know this. I know you're familiar with the states of matter. And this is probably how you learned about states of matter. You probably um, learned these definitions. So a solid has a definite shape and definite volume. And so, you know, think about something that you are familiar with that's a solid. You know, it it doesn't change shape unless you do something to it. It holds its own shape and it takes up a certain amount of space that doesn't change. Liquids also take up a certain amount of space that doesn't change. But if you put them in a different container, they're going to take the shape of that container. That may be what you learned instead of indefinite shape. But that's what that means. If I have um, a soda can or soda in a can, you know, when it's in that can, it takes a certain shape. If I pour it into a glass, it takes the shape of that glass. If I pour it out on the floor, it spreads out pretty flat on the floor. And so indefinite shape is what we mean by that. But the amount of space that it takes up is exactly the same no matter what container it's in. Now the last one is the gas, and it has indefinite shape and indefinite volume. And so basically a gas will just take up whatever space you give it. It expands um, to fill up whatever container that it's in, and it takes the shape of that container. And so when you think about those definitions, sometimes it's tempting to think that a liquid is kind of in between a solid and a gas, and solid and gas are sort of opposite from each other. And that's not exactly true. And that's a misconception that I run into a lot in, um, in chemistry one. And you may have that idea, but, but that's not exactly how it is. So we want to start thinking about these states of matter at the particle level. These definitions and these understandings kind of come from what we would call a macro level. And that means, you know, the big picture. But in chemistry, we're really concerned with the particles that make up these, um, these substances. And when we get to that level of particles, a lot of what we understand about particles came from first looking at the differences between solids, liquids, and gases. And so that's where we're going to start as well. So one thing that I like for you to think about, and that I'll have you do pretty often, is um, particle diagrams. So if I wanted to look at particle diagrams of solids, liquids, and gases, this is what I would expect you to, to come up with. Um, so a solid, if you look at the difference here between a solid and a liquid, the solid has a very regular arrangement. Now my drawing is not great, but what I am trying to show you here, you know, we've got these straight lines and they're kind of lined up. These little atoms, these little particles are in between these particles. They might be stacked up. You know, you could have a solid that looks more like this. But no matter how they're arranged, they have some kind of regular pattern to them. That's how you know a solid is a solid at the particle level, if you could see down to that level. Liquids are very jumbled up. Now notice if this is the same volume as this, the liquid is filling up that same amount of space. And this is where I was talking about a misconception comes in sometimes. Usually when students come in, they'll tell me that a solid is very close together and a liquid is spread farther apart than the solid, but that's not the case. Liquids and solids take up pretty much the same amount of, of volume uh, if it's the same substance. So like solid water and liquid water, think about that for a second. Um, and water is a unique substance because actually its liquid is more dense than its solid, which is kind of opposite of what you would think if you think about liquid as being exactly an intermediate between solids and gases. So solids are organized and the particles are pretty close together. Liquids are disorganized 
and the particles are still pretty close together. And then we have gases. If we have the same volume here of the solid and the liquid, or as the solid and the liquid, you know, we'd only have a couple of little particles of gases in there because they are so far apart. And I've also put these little marks on the, the gases because, as we're going to find out, they're, they're moving very quickly. And that's really what differentiates between solids, liquids, and gases. Now, that's not to say that solids aren't moving. We might put little marks here, and most of you probably know that those particles are, are sort of vibrating in place. It's almost like they have a little spring between them and they just vibrate between each other. The liquid particles are moving a little more. They're able to slide around past each other and that's why they can change their shape. These guys are locked in place relative to each other. These guys can move around quite a bit more and then of course gases can move around a lot. Now the question that we want to look at in the next couple of weeks really is is why that is. Why do these particles behave differently? Um, and why do we have these different states of matter? And you probably also have the idea that the reason is, it's the amount of energy that the particles have. So we're gonna really take a dive into looking at, you know, how that energy flows in a system um, as, we, as we think about those states of matter. So that's just a little introduction. We're going to do a lot more with the states of matter. I've got a few more little video clips for you to watch that are a little bit corny. They're called Eureka videos. But um, hopefully it's going to get your brain from the macro level where I think about, you know, a solid is maybe a chunk of ice, the liquid is the water, and the gas as steam. Instead of thinking of the big picture, we want to look down to those particles. And so that's what the next few little video clips are designed to do. So we will go from there and I'll talk to you again soon.